You want to be sure Zen Gyan is worth your time and money, as well as being safe for your mental health before you buy or play it? This is the video for you, friend. I'm the CC and let CC play, and this is an Anxious Gamer review. Zen Gyan, there is no way I'm pronouncing this right, is an isometric action RPG with roguelike elements. Despite looking and playing like an anime Diablo, its systems remind me more of Risk of Rain or The Binding of Isaac than the Diablo series. You pick one of the characters whom have an auto attack-esque ability, as well as a dodge, then a short cooldown attack and a longer cooldown attack. While I was only able to play three of the characters, the two you start with and a third you unlock after beating the first boss, they all seem to follow the same vein. The gameplay is broken up into stages with a boss stage after a few normal stages. You'd progress through each stage while fighting enemies with fairly minimal variety. You'd have little basic, big basic, biggest basic, ranged healers, summoners, slimes, and a utility monster who would make cages or something similar. Along the way, you would collect items. Some would give you passive benefits like providing a small heal every few seconds or causing your attacks to have a chance to set off an ice bomb to freeze everything in a radius. Others would be active items that you would have to charge up by fighting, then use them to do something like leave fire or ice on the floor. Then, when you died, you would lose it all and find yourself back on the character select screen. For games of this type, it seemed to be a mostly cut and dry affair, but something I could never quite put my finger on made the whole thing seem clunky. Slight lag in the controls? Dinky attack animations? Or hit registration? All of the above and then some? Not sure, but it did not feel crisp. There isn't much to talk about where the visuals and audio are concerned. Very standard. Same could be said for the characters. You have plenty of the anime tropes. You got wise old sensei, angsty boy who must save the world, angsty girl who always has headphones on with a bunny backpack and must save the world, happy girl with an umbrella, happy cat girl, strong independent woman who will probably tie you up in a basement in a bad way. The story seemed to be standard, but I'll be honest, I wasn't totally sure. The English was pretty bad. Not trying to be mean, I'd imagine this was made by a small studio, just stating a fact. Plus, with the nature of the game, I doubt it has a ton of story regardless. It's mostly about the roguelike gameplay, I'd wager. Lastly, for what is usually the highlight of my reviews, where I talk about any potential triggers for the various incarnations of mental illness, I don't really have much to warn about in the simple title. It's a roguelike, so if you have an anger problem, be careful, but if you enjoy roguelikes, there should be no problem here. In the end, the game is fun, but also kind of meh. If you like roguelike games, it would be hard to go wrong with this one as it's super cheap. However, I don't think this is a game I'd be telling anyone to drop what they were doing and play. If you're truly itching for a new roguelike game to get a few hours out of, get it. Otherwise, I'd say look for something else. CC, 